Welcome everyone. Um, today's topic is experts talking about financing and funding. Okay, um, we have the pleasure to have one lawyer from one lawyer. Oh, you hear me? Mm -hmm. Perfect. From Homebridge, he's our preferred partner. Um, so thank you very much, Juan, for joining us this morning, this afternoon, um, in this talk. Um, so Juan is also an investor. Um, he's been doing primarily rentals, fix and flips, and uh, he's grown his rental portfolio incredibly amazing in the last two years. Um, so we invited him to tell us more about funding, um, all kinds of creative financial options that he's been able to tap into. And um, if you guys have any questions, please send them via the chat or you can unmute yourself to make this very interactive, okay? So one, thank you for joining today and uh, let's get the ball running. Awesome, well, thanks for having me, Hugo. Um, so the, um, you know, again, uh, as you mentioned, I am a uh, residential mortgage lender. So I am with Homebridge Financial and I'm the loan officer who you normally talk to when you buy, you want to buy your personal home or, um, you know, again, we use residential financing for uh, part of our strategy uh, when we're building a portfolio. And I like to say that we, we weave a tapestry of financing between residential lending, commercial lending, you know, uh, hard money, private lenders, and it's really having a thorough understanding of, uh, of the entire philosophy as to what we're doing, right? Um, so the the goal that we've uh, that we've uh, set when we're when we're investing in real estate is to be able to hopefully be able to buy it, fix it. Uh, you know, we're looking to buy it, fix it, rent it, and refinance our original capital back out of it, so that we can you know rinse and repeat and and go uh, you know go purchase some additional properties and. And implementing that strategy in in a, in a you know couple years uh, in, in two or in uh, right around two years uh, we were able to buy fix rent and refinance and we now own 20 uh, 20 doors we have a couple of uh, multi units in there uh, so we have a total of 20 doors in the portfolio and it's it's cash flowing um, you know it's, it's cash flowing very well we're uh, right around eleven thousand a month in uh, in net cash flow, which is a which is a great place to be as we're as we're getting started and and continuing to build our portfolio, right? Well, that's um, very amazing. Uh, and a big round of applause for you and your team. And we also have the pleasure to have Brandon uh, Moulton from Renovo. So, Brandon, thank you for joining this this afternoon. Um, He's been our partner. He's done uh, several loans for us. And uh, so, Brandon, um, thank you for joining today's uh, webinar. So if you would like to introduce yourself and then we're gonna keep it very interactive. So between Juan and yourself, and then if um, Dr. Saeed John joins, that'd be awesome. He's a private money lender. But between the two of you, that'll be incredibly well if, if you can um, have the, the floor. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Hugo. Uh, yeah, I'm with Renovo Financial, uh, Senior Vice President of Lending. We focus on value-add uh, construction deals, anything from $100,000 to $5 million, uh, from a rehab to a bridge to new construction, uh, condos, you name it, multifamily, and everything in between. So uh, definitely crazy times, but you know we're still finding our way through this and, and seeing some strong activity. Uh, in addition to that, within our product suite, we off also offer 30-year fixed mortgages uh, for cash-flowing, stabilized properties. Awesome. Great. So let's start with some questions for both of you. So one, um, and uh, Brandon, when a new investor comes to you and they bring up a deal, right, they believe they have a great deal, what is it that you're going to be looking for, okay, to make sure that they get funding for it? Okay, and then what is the difference between your services from Renovo as a Harmony lender and now that you're offering a longer term loans um, versus the back end on, on your end one uh, for Homebridge on the conventional side? So, 
you know, usually I'm going to get involved. Um, I'm going to get involved in the um, in what we call the takeout loan, right? So I'm, typically I'm going to be the refinance um, when when somebody's completed their project. Uh, that's where I'm going to get involved as as the takeout lender. Um, traditionally, somebody might start with a Renovo uh, to get acquisition uh, to get money to buy it and fix it, or they go with a private money lender or uh, a variety of options. But I'm going to get involved typically in the refinance aspect of it, right? So, from the residential uh, lending perspective, what we're looking for is uh, we're going to be able to refinance. 75% of the after repair value uh, once that property has been completed. So you buy it, fix it, rent it. And again, I'm gonna be able to refinance 75% of the after repair value on a one to four unit property. So single family homes up to a four unit building, uh, condos, townhouses, anything like that. Uh, so up to four units, we can go 75% after repair value. Uh, but we have to understand that in my world, I'm a full documentation lender. So I'm going to be looking for uh, tax returns, pay stubs, bank statements. We're going to fully document every loan that we do. Um, and traditionally, you know, the, the credit requirements are going to be a little bit, um, they're going to be a little bit uh, more thorough in my world than you might see in, in some of the commercial lending. Now, the other uh, big thing that we that we have to remember is that we require 180 day seasoning uh, in order to um, in order uh, to refinance 75 percent cash out. If we're taking money out of the property, we have to wait 180 days. And we have we have found uh, ways to work through that, and I can come back and visit that uh, more towards the end of this conversation. Not to not to totally overwhelm some people, but 75% cash out after 180 days um, is our seasoning requirement, and we're going to be looking for full documentation, tax returns, pay stubs, bank statements in order to qualify for that. But the bright side of my world is typically I'm going to have uh, the best interest rates available um, because we are selling our loans to Fannie Mae. We, we have quite a bit of liquidity in my world uh, simply because these are, these are Fannie Mae loans. Perfect, thank you Juan. And then we also have the pleasure to have Dr. Uh, Ali join. Uh, thank you Dr. Uh, Ali for joining. He's a private money lender, um, so welcome. Thank you so much. Brandon. I feel very privileged Thank to be part of your discussion today. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. So now let's focus on the upfront purchase, right? So somebody finds a deal and then they're, they will either come to Dr. Saeed for private money lender or Brandon, for instance, for harmony lending. So can you explain as to the why should investors come to you? Well, what are the benefits of using harmony lenders? Uh, or private money lenders? What are the advantages? Um, I'll jump in here. So, you know, there's, in my opinion, there's three primary reasons to, to go with the private lender. One is, one is speed uh, to close. So we can close within 10 business days. That helps a lot of folks win deals. Um, two, uh, real world underwriting. So, um, to Juan's point, he's going to be the lowest interest rate, but he's going to ask for probably the most times, um, which is totally fair and to totally normal for the industry. Uh, whereas, um, you know, there might be some bumps and bruises along the way, but there's a conversation to be had on, on our end. Um, project viability is going to play a big, a big role in that conversation if we've got a good deal and we've got a good operator, but, you know, maybe their credit score is not the best for whatever reason. Um, and then the third part is going to be down payment, right? So, um, a lot of guys out there, maybe a lot of guys, even on this, this webinar here that they find the property, they bid the property out, they do all the heavy lifting, they're meeting and fighting with contractors, doing all that stuff. And then they've got a rich uncle that puts up the money and they split it 50, 50. It's a great way to get started, but that gets really old really fast when you're the one taking the calls at eight, nine o'clock and going to Home Depot at six in the morning and all that stuff. So 
Um, they'll be looking for a lower down payment with us so that we essentially become a, a cheaper partner uh, in the interim. And it, it, it works especially well, in my opinion, for um, folks that are, are looking to build a rental portfolio. Absolutely. Dr. Saeed, what, what's your take on the private money uh, lending? Yes, like, thank you so somebody... much. Uh, so I actually, uh, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me over with these experts. I feel uh, uh, like a novice here, but I've been involved with private money lending for the past two years. I belong to an organization called Mastery. My gurus are Andrew Holmes and Rahul Vesal, from whom I've learned a lot. The group involves a lot of investors and people involved with uh, developing their uh, investment portfolios through uh, either flipping or rehab or cash flow properties in this organization. Having said that, uh, typically a lot of the borrowers who come to me are coming are those whom I have come to know through this organization. Uh, and my uh, I do my due diligence when they approach me. Uh, it is a much more easier process basically because I'm looking for uh, certain types of information, namely uh, what is their exit strategy, how much is their contract price, how much would be their rehab price, and so I would be giving them 100% on the total amount of project value that they will be putting in. To that effect, I do my due diligence. I require uh, the, um, the their contract, uh, their comps, how have they come to arrive at their uh, ARV? Uh, is, is that, are the figures actually making sense? I do uh, ask them for like uh, reports like village inspection reports, the home inspection reports, uh, having uh, uh, also if they have any appraisal reports, things like that. Uh, if their project is a flipping or a cash flow, and if it's a cash flow, as, as uh, Juan mentioned, I certainly want to. Uh, uh, explore whether they will be able to get 75% of their financing at the end of the game. Uh, because I want to make it a win-win situation for both the borrower as well as for myself. And typically after they request funding from me, it takes about anywhere from two to three weeks for me to come up with the, the actual loan. It is typically funded through my IRA. Uh, I'm at the retirement stage of my life. So this is the only way that I have my own income source basically. Uh, I, I'm not uh, professing that I'm uh, the expert in private lending, but this is my own individual uh, you know, uh, way of lending. Typically, it's two points and 12%. Uh, loan is typically for about four to six months. I hope I've addressed some of the basic uh, summarized viewpoint of uh, my own uh, version of private money lending. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Saeed. Um, so, Brandon, what is it now, especially with this pandemic, that investors need to have in place or line up before they come to you? So, so that underwriting goes very quickly. Um, well, it starts with being organized um, and turning docs around quickly uh, that shows that your head is in the game and that you're somebody, you know, right out of the gates that may be a good bet. Um, right now is not a, a time to fumble through documentation or your plan or your project. It, it's a very big turnoff to lenders right now. And frankly, it's just not going to be a, a good use of time to, to try and help you through what could be the easy part. So come with a, a clear plan, have your documents ready and turn them around quickly. And then uh, having pictures and photos and being able to clearly explain your past and, and your your history and your experience. That's huge. And then, you know, the contractor is going to also play a, a big role in it too. Um, being able to clearly articulate how many projects you've done with that, that contractor um, is, uh, is what gets us nice and cozy as well. Perfect. What kind of documents are you going to require from investors to start to get the ball rolling? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Application, two years tax return, three months bank statements, and then uh, quarterly retirement accounts. And then if you have pictures and a list of the, the projects that you've completed to date, um, that's something also we, we would be asking for. Okay. 
Now, ideally, they should provide that up front before they bring the deal to you, right? So that you sort of vet them and make sure that they are a viable partner. Yeah, yeah, that that's the best way and preferred way is to, hey, let's have the conversation now, get the document case so that we can put that behind us and check that, that off the list, so to speak. And then once we get you pre-qualified, we would issue you a pre-approval letter to submit with offers. Absolutely, perfect. And then, and then the conversation transitions really to just about the project since we've we've all underwritten you at that point. Absolutely. So one of the things that I really like, especially about working with Renovo, is that growth, right? Um, as he mentioned earlier, working with a private money lender, uh, as he said, it gets old. Not only that, but um, it's limited. Like for instance. Let's assume that we're gonna be working with Dr. Said as an example. You know, he's gonna have probably many investors working with him, so his resources eventually are gonna be limited, right? Whereas working with a large institution, you have a huge potential for growth. So that's one of the main differences between private money lenders and then uh, harmony lenders like Renovo. Um, and not only that, but also relationship-based plays a big role, especially with private money lenders. So you have to build rapport. They really need to trust you before they lend you any money. Um, would you say that's accurate, um, Brandon, Dr. Saeed? Absolutely. Yeah, right. And I would me. echo what, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Brandon, if I cut you off, please go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I yeah, so saying. I would echo also what Brandon mentioned about doing, doing the due diligence in uh, taking a look at the pictures and all that. Um, and uh, actually going through the uh, property and, and, and understanding basically uh, at the at, at, in the end uh, whether the investment is going to be a secure investment for the private money lender, and I would probably assume also for the hard money lender. So th that is definitely important. Perfect. Now, uh, Brandon, can you touch on the debt coverage ratio? Because I know that is a very important ratio for uh, harmony lenders, including uh, private money lenders, but can you briefly explain what that is? Because we wanna make sure that our investors fully understand what that is, because when they analyze deals, they need to make sure that that debt coverage ratio comes to what you're looking for. Yeah, so, um, so the debt, debt service coverage ratio is basically ensuring that the, the rents are, are sufficient to cover the loan. Um, uh, in excess of your expenses, but the 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 simple math here is you take your your total rents. So if it's two thousand dollars per month, times it by twelve for twelve months, and then we would look at a ten percent vacancy. You take that number, and then you have so that's your your effective gross income, and then you have your expenses. So if it's a one to four unit property, we're really just going to look at principal or sorry we're going to look at um taxes insurance and then we'll put like a five percent in there for reserves for maintenance etc and then you would take your your principal and then amortize it over uh 30 years so um you want to be at a 1.2 debt service or better and pricing gets better in the capital markets at 1.3 Perfect, so that brings us to a great point, pricing. So when you mention pricing and terms, right? So what are the typical terms for uh, the loans, Harmony Lending and the terms? Sure, so for the, the short-term option and the value add bucket, we'll, we'll call it, um, we would be looking for uh, a deal that's gonna be 12 months uh, in term. And then the pricing would be high single digits to low double digits and one to three points. And uh, aside from that, there's $1,500 for legal and processing and then appraisal is at cost. Um, and then we would be looking for uh, 15 to 20% down of the total project cost. Okay, so this is one of the biggest difference, right? Between harmony lenders and private money lenders. As Dr. Saeed mentioned earlier, he can fund up to 100% of the of the project, including the rehab. So now, Brandon, in your case, you're requiring 
15 to 20 percent down and then can you explain more about the rehab and the scope of work right um how that works because many investors think that you're going to give them the money up front for them to do the, the work so can you can you cover touch on that a little bit more sure so just using the most basic example if you're buying it for 100 and putting in 100 um we would be looking to for 15 to 20 percent down of of the total cost which is um 200 right so we would be looking for 30 to 40 down so at that time um so if you're buying it for 100 we would wire in 60 you would wire in 40 to acquire the property and then from there uh, the expectation is that the borrower will get those projects started and they'll fund the, the initial dollars uh, to get cabinets, et cetera, going. And then we would come in and do a draw inspection to reimburse you for uh, work that's completed. So you're going to need an, another call of 15 to 20 to get the project started. And then you get reimbursed along the way. And you just continue to chase the same drama. Perfect. Now, Dr. Said, how does that work on your end on private money lending? Would you provide pretty much the same structure? Uh, have the investor put the money up front for the rehab and then reimburse through uh, draws? No, actually, in my situation, uh, tradition what I have done um, in my practice of private uh, of uh, private lending is that I provide them a hundred percent of their uh, the the contract price as well as their rehab cost so suppose if somebody is buying a property let's say for 75000 uh, on the contract and has and has an uh, a, a figure of approximately 25000 for the rehab project then they'll come to me to borrow 100000 and uh, at that particular point in time i will be securing the loan with a promissory note and mortgage uh, assignment of rents and leases uh, and a guarantee if it's an LLC uh, those types of documents um, and uh, charging them two points with 12 percent uh, of the uh, loan and typically it's a four-month loan if they want to extend it then typically uh, another two points are added so that is basically the structure now I thoroughly do a completely due diligence on this project I some often at times go to the project take a lot of photographs do my own comps I'm also on the side I have a real estate license although I don't phys practically practice as a realtor but at the same time I can access the MLS and do a lot of the comps so I try to put myself in the shoes of the borrower and so I and that is basically you know the strategy that I utilize uh, and I'm, okay. perhaps other private money lenders do other other methods and techniques but that is basically what i do great and something very important to mention is that you as an investor will be required to get a lien waiver uh to get reimbursed is that right brandon and what wh why is that yeah so a lien waiver we would we would look for a lien waiver from the general contractor or you basically stating that the work that you say is complete uh is and that there's no right to to put a, a lien on there uh, going forward. So uh, what can happen is if you don't pay a contractor, or a contractor feels like they've been shorted, they can put a mechanics lien on the property, which would uh, prime the first mortgage and crowd title, and makes it difficult. You can't you can't sell your, your property until that gets remedied. Perfect. Great point. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, absolutely. It just adding value to the property primes uh, the first lien position. So super important, friends, to always make sure that you get a lien waiver. Uh, now, so that brings us to the point. Once uh, the investor does the work, and now they need to pay the the original loan, the fix and flip loan. So what is it that you're going to be looking for on the exit strategy uh, to do a refinance? to turn that loan into a rental loan. Is that for me or Juan? Or? Uh, so that will apply for you and then also for one. Got it. So we would, we would look for, basically, we want to see the, if we didn't finance the deal out of the gates, we would want to see a copy of the HUD, the settlement statement from when you purchase it to verify the cost. And then also the sworn statement to see a, the amount of work you've done. 
and then from there we would just need a copy of the lease and, and the, the underwriting docs otherwise and we would run that debt service coverage ratio calculation we discussed before and uh, present you with options as a 5-1 arm, 7-1 arm, 10-1 arm, or a 30-year fixed. Perfect. One, what is it that you're looking on your end? So when the investor has rehabbed the property, they rented the property, and now they need to pay that uh, Harmony loan or private money loan, what is it that you're going to be looking for? So we're, um, can you hear me? I'll just make sure yes. I'm on. That's okay. So we're, again, we are, uh, you know, going to be uh, collecting, you know, tax returns, pay stubs, bank statements. If they're self-employed, uh, we're going to need two years of personal and business. Um, and traditionally, the way it works in my world is if, um, if somebody purchases a home or somebody owns a home and they can qualify for their personal residence, uh, that's how we're going to define their front end ratio. So we look at we look at what percentage of their gross monthly income is going towards housing and then going towards overall debt. So um, if uh, let, let's just say somebody is earning uh, ten thousand dollars a month in in income, we want to see that their personal residence is no more than about three thousand dollars a month, including taxes and insurance. So that establishes our front end ratio or our housing ratio. Now, the way we look at investment properties is we're going to take 75% of market rents, um, the, the lease or, or you know, the market rent that is determined by the appraiser. We're going to use 75% of the rent. We're going to subtract that off the total payment. And then uh, we're only going to, uh, if, if it's a, a net loss, we're going to add, as a, add, as, add it as a liability. If it's a net gain, if they're, if, uh, if they're making positive cash flow, we're actually going to add that to their income for qualifying. So, you know, what does that all mean is let's just suppose that we have somebody who has a $1,600 a month rent. We're going to use 75% of the 160, which would be $1,200 a month in net rent. And let's just pretend that uh, that they have a total monthly payment, uh, including taxes and insurance, of $1,100. Then in my world, it would be $1,100 minus $1,200 in net rent. Well, that's actually going to calculate. Uh, that's going to create a positive cash flow of $100, which gets added to their income for qualifying. So now their income, we're going to calculate it as 10,100. So instead of having a 30% housing ratio, now it's 29.99. So it actually got a little better. Uh, so we don't calculate the total payment is we're just looking at the net loss or the net gain and we're going to add it to income or add it as a liability. So if the properties they're acquiring, if they meet the the debt coverage ratio that Brandon mentioned of 1.2 or better, typically what, it, what that means in my world is that 75% of the rent is going to offset the payment. So it's really going to push it and there's really no net loss to that, which if they can qualify for their personal home and they're purchasing properties that have decent cash flow, then the, you know they can, we can stack up to 10 properties that way uh, in the Fannie Mae world. Perfect. Now, can we talk about uh, the option to do a cash out, refinance, and also the seasoning period that was mentioned earlier? Correct. So if we're going to do a cash out refinance, uh, Fannie Mae requires 180 day seasoning uh, from, when the, so from when you acquired the property to when we're going to refinance, it's 180 days seasoning in order to do a cash out. Um, I have personally found, um, you know, kind of a great way to leverage, um, to leverage and accelerate, um, is the last, the last property that I just did. Um, actually Dr. Syed graciously financed it for me. I was able to finance a hundred percent of my acquisition and rehab. And the, the loophole here is, uh, because I borrowed all of the money day one to buy it and fix it that is not considered a cash out i can i can literally step in and refinance that as soon as the construction is done is done and is rented 
um, we're able to um, we're able to refinance out of that immediately because we we borrowed that entire amount at the time of acquisition. Um, so it's a very kind of a very technical step, but as long as you borrow all of it at the very uh, at the time of acquisition, not the same day or not the day after. So all of the money needs to be wired to the title company before that acquisition closes so that we can document that that was, that was um, an upfront loan for acquisition and rehab. And then we're able to refinance it immediately. Perfect. So Juan, you, I want to say, I would, yeah, if I may interject, I wanted to thank Juan for making a public announcement that my loan is getting repaid. <laughs> Dr. Ali, did you get my money? Did you get my money back? <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> you didn't have to do that, but appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Thank you. And and again, that's the that's part of this whole relationship building is he lends it to me because he thinks I'm a you know I'm a uh, you know I know what I'm doing. And at the end of the transaction, we make sure to to you know to pay him back as quickly as possible and. And um, you know, again, and, and we all through this uh, in all transparency, COVID kind of delayed a few things, um, and it created some challenges. But open communication between the private lender and the investor is critical, and the trust between us. Right. Correct. Right. Okay. right. So, but yeah, that's uh, that's how we're able to turn it around quickly. Is if we finance 100% right up front we're able to do a rate and term refinance uh, with no seasoning requirement. Otherwise, we have to wait 180 days uh, to recognize the new value. Perfect, thank you. Well, how does that work on your end, Brandon? For the cash out refinance, any seasoning required? Yeah, so within a year, uh, we can do the last year of 100% financing, uh, sorry, 100% of cost or um, up to 75% LTV. And then after a year, um, we can just do add value uh, and, and do it truly based on LTV. Not to value. Um, we, can do so cash we, out. we can do cash out at any time. It's just going to be up to 100% of cost. Okay, so can you give an example with numbers? Let's say somebody bought it for 100, they put in 50, now the property price is for 200,000. Yeah, so you, you, you your your cost is 150, right? Um, so once you're finished, um, let's assume you put down 20%, right? Let me get my calculator yeah. out here. So if you 150,000 times 0. 0.8, um, that would be 120,000, which would mean you would bring. 30,000 to closing. So when you go to refi, we can make a we can do a loan of 150,000 or up to 75% LTV whichever is less. In this instance, it works out to be the same, right? Because 150 over 200 is 75. So you would be able to get cash out um, up to that 150,000. Now there's going to be escrows, there's going to be other things on top of it, closing costs, et cetera. So it's not going to be a true 30 that you get out, but you know, somewhere right around low twenties that you'd be able to cash out probably. Right. So all in and the investor would have about 10,000. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. So now that you mentioned closing costs, appraisals and so forth, can we touch on that? What is the investor looking at when they refinance? What are the fees they need to, be aware of um for us there's going to be origination points typically one to two and then uh you're going to have to have uh, uh escrows for real estate taxes and insurance so we would be looking to to satisfy the next the next payment essentially so yeah. um to be able to make payment for the three one and then going forward you're going to roll in you know monthly escrows as well um, we would also have the $1,500 processing and legal, et cetera. And then you've got appraisal of $350 to $450. And then you've got title, uh, which is usually, um, I peg it as a dollar per thousand, roughly, in terms of title insurance. 
Okay, perfect. What about on your end one? What are the typical closing expenses on a refinance? Uh, on a refinance, uh, we're going to, again, uh, whatever the appraisal cost is, um, you're probably looking at a single family home appraisal with, uh, with a rent schedule is probably about $550. Um, and then our interest rates are going to be very much based on credit scores. Um, so assuming that somebody has, uh, you know, 700 credit score today, we would be looking at a 30 year fixed with, um, uh, 30 year fixed, uh, probably right around, uh, and this is just a guesstimate. So, you know, uh, um, we'd probably be looking 30 year fixed at around four, maybe four and a quarter. And uh, typically, investors are going to have to pay maybe a point, point and a half to get that. Perfect. Dr. Uh, Saeed, do you have any insight as to, because obviously you want to get paid, right, from the refinance. So are you working directly with investors to make sure that happens on a timely matter? How, how are you ensuring that you're getting paid? Well, first of all, uh, I have been very blessed um, that I have had borrowers like Juan and so many other uh, within our group of mastery uh, that uh, they have, I've never had any problem, frankly, and uh, over the past couple of years that I've been lending out loans. Um, now, um, I do understand COVID restrictions. I do understand that there is this uh, period where uh, seasoning has to come about, uh, things keep changing. So from that perspective, I definitely want to put myself in the shoes of my borrower and all the challenges and hurdles and difficulties that they have to go through on a day-to-day -day basis. To, to that effect, I'm really quite uh, able to accommodate myself and be considerate of their issues and difficulties. Uh, so that's basically what happens. So if at the end of four months, originally I would have expected a two point to be charged on the loan. If I were to extend a four month loan in this situation, I would definitely forego that and take all of that into consideration and, uh, and, and work with them you know, accordingly. Right, perfect, that makes sense. So that brings us to the next point. Um, now with COVID, what is it that you will recommend investors to do right now to prepare for the huge wave of uh, distress properties that are gonna be coming into the market starting next summer for the next couple of years? What is it, how do they need to prepare uh, to really fu fully take advantage of it and line up all their funding for next year? Are you asking me or who are you asking? Yeah, the panelists. So all three of you. What is it that you, your advice is for all the real estate investors listening today? Well, I think personally, I think that um, as somebody is building and scaling, um, this is all, you know, this is truly about uh, is, uh, kind of building your uh, your dream team, right? So part of your, your team is, you know, your contractors and your lenders, your commercial lenders, your private money lenders, your residential lenders. Um, part of it is, you know, a lot of this is, is relationship based, right? So even, even in my world, um, you know, uh, Hugo, that, you know, when, when we're working with somebody, we're, we're looking to help them build, you know, uh, as, as far as they want to build, right? Whether it's five properties, 10 properties, 20 properties, there's a strategy that goes into this. This is more than just kind of a one, you know, one, one and done is, is really not uh, an effective strategy. Um, you know, as an investor, you build a relationship with, with your lending partners, right? Um, because they, they really understand what you're trying to accomplish. And um, so what my strong recommendation is, um, you know, you should, you should have a relationship with a commercial lender. You should have a relationship with a residential lender. Um, and, you know, and, and uh, if you're lucky enough to have a relationship with some private money lenders, that's great also. Um, and, you know, again, I would, I would strongly encourage you to, uh, for those of you that are going to use residential loans, give me a call. We're happy to, uh, you know, to come up with a strategy as to let's get you, you know, quote unquote, pre-approved for end loan financing. If we need to help you raise your credit scores or, or really take a look at, you know, do you have enough reserves for what we require? Um, 
is you don't look for financing once uh, once you need it. You have to really take you know be be lined up with your financing options before you even get started. Begin with the end in mind, right? And then there's going to be some folks that they don't qualify in my world, so they they you know they should really be already having those conversations with their commercial lenders. And then there's some folks that they're going to build. Uh, a tandem strategy, part with commercial and part with residential, um, and that's how you're you're able to, to you know I, I built very very quickly because I was able to have very uh, strong you know obviously I have a strong understanding of the of the financial side of this, but I you know again I had very good relationships with my lenders and that's what allowed me to to really accelerate. Perfect, thank you, Juan. Brandon, what would you say, uh, people? What's your advice for investors? Yeah, uh, just I mean, I think Juan did a great job of articulating it, but just to piggyback on that is is trust and accountability, and show the track record, and be able to you know articulate how great your story is and what your business plan is. So there's there's no confusion around that, and then also know the rules of the game, right? To Juan's point, um, get pre-approved by not only a residential lender, a private money guy, um, and then a commercial, so that you know what they're looking for uh, and how to use those different tools, right? So, um, you know, not all deals need to go through any one of those avenues. It's just understanding when and how to use them. Absolutely, great. Thank and, you. Don't and, say, and oh, really, Take take the advice of the lenders and ask them how can I how can I improve you know my my I guess my standing or my uh, how I'm viewed here from a credit credit uh, worthiness. Do I need to get my credit score up? Do I need to build more reserves? What do I need to do so that when I want to pull the trigger, there's no question. Great point. Thank you, Brendan. Dr. Saeed, what's your advice? I think it has been very, very well articulated by both of the panelists. Uh, to, I'll just add to that uh, a really, really good line of communication between the, between the two parties, the investor and the private and the and the uh, source uh, of uh, and the and the lender, may it be uh, hard money or uh, uh, lenders like Juan and myself. And also to make a convincing case of a win-win situation for each party. Perfect. Uh, is there anything that I haven't covered or asked you that you would like to share with the audience? One, you know, other, other I think um, I think the the most important part uh, to real estate investing is um, is is putting together a great deal. Right, that if you if you can uh, find a great property and buy it at the right price and be able to rehab it uh, within a within the right budget, um, I, the, the tools are still available to uh, the, the tools are readily available uh, to be able to be a successful real estate investor. Um, but I think everybody. Um, Everybody is going to make sure that they're going to do their due diligence to to make sure that they're lending on quality projects. Um, and and again, it's uh, um, I would uh, it's always it's always been about finding a great deal. If you have a great deal, there's a lot of uh, different ways to to um, to to fund it. I don't think funding is an issue in today's market. Thank you, Juan. Um... Any other comments, Brandon, Dr. Ali? No, nothing. I, I think we have covered, at least I have covered most of everything. Thank you. Yeah, Great. No. So, no? Yeah. Okay, so we've posted on the chat uh, Brandon's contact information and one loyals. Please make sure that you reach out to them. They're incredible resources to help you grow your business. Uh, thank you, Drs. Ali. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Juan, for joining us this afternoon. I greatly appreciate taking time out of your busy schedule this weekend. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Best of luck to everybody. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, Brandon.
Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Thank you, Dr. Ali. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to give you free access to Chicago Deal Vault. Phil, if you could please post the instructions, the promo code is going to be money. Uh, just to piggyback on what one said, you need to find great deals. So we're going to give you the platform to find amazing deals uh, through Chicago Deal Vault. So if you could please um, follow the instructions, Phil just posted the form that you need to fill out, the package you need to select, and the promo code is going to be money. Uh, so very simple. Once you get to this form, when you get to the drop down menu where you select the package, select the special Chicago deal vault is in capital letters. Um, the promo code is money. It could be uppercase, lowercase. Okay, that's going to give you 30 days free to Chicago deal vault. We have MLS off market deals such as probates, pre foreclosures, upcoming auctions, shadow inventory vacant properties. We have over 6,000 private money lenders, over 60,000 cash buyers, area reports, wholesale deals, um, pretty much a one-stop shop. Okay, so we're going to show you how to find amazing homegrown deals so that they get funded when you present them to our partners. Um, in addition to that, in Chicago Deal Vault, we have access to over 80 preferred partners. Uh, that includes Renovo, one, um, us are preferred partners. So thank you everyone for joining uh, this afternoon.